I think that notions of um, property, notions of ownership, um, are intricately linked to the idea of value. Um, and private property and public property, of course, vary from society to society. Um, where I live and where I've been trying to work for the past four or five years, um, there's a huge emphasis on the private and the personal. Uh, so much so that there are, in fact, little to no public institutions, and um, there really is no space for uh, any sort of public initiative. So the idea of value is completely privatized. The idea of public value is limited really to sort of basics, water, barely electricity, um, and a sort of decaying and decrepit public transportation infrastructure. So one of the challenges um, that any new cultural initiative confronts, um, not only in getting audiences to sort of convince them about the value of our work, whether it's a theater production, an art exhibition, a concert, um, but in getting funders to understand and to convince them about the value of our work is extremely difficult because we're working against a system that devalues publics. We're not only trying to convince, you know, I guess a potential audience member or a potential funder that our product, whether that product is an experience, whether that product is a painting, um, is inherently worth their time and money. But we're also trying to do something, because I'm a theater director, collectively. So there's sort of, it's a sort of two-tiered um, uh, challenge, I would say. Um, so one of the sort of solutions, I think, or one of the tactics um, that I've been working with and trying really to understand whether it's true or not is um, the value of literacy. Um, I think literacy is a concept that um, these, you know, for lack of a better term, capitalists can really, they understand literacy. Um, literacy is inherently, I think, um, it's, it's, it's kind of non-political now just because of everyone's access to um, uh, sort of advanced telecommunications. It assumes that anyone with a cell phone has some level of literacy. So deepening literacy is um, what the theater does. And I think that working to convey that and how theater deepens literacy is really my mission and the mission of the volunteers that I work with. Because a culture and a society that knows how to read, really read, and write and challenge what we're reading and writing is a culture that can generate new ideas, is a culture that can generate and uh, amend a legal code, is a culture that can exchange ideas and operate in an increasingly multilingual universe. Um, so this is why um, we're focused specifically on um, uh, text-based theater. I feel I'm in a context where um, there is no assumed intrinsic value to the arts if it's not a commodity. Vis-a-vis um, -vis funders, I think um, there are the instrumental value is evident in the discourse of uh, the sort of foreign aid agendas. It's evident also in the sort of humanitarian philanthropists discourse. Um, using theater and performing arts, you know, as a tool of empowerment, as a mechanism of empowerment, as a platform to talk about um, oppression, um, rape, um, female genital mutilation, um, uh, sexism, gender inequality, um, racism. All of all of all those topics need to be addressed. Um, and so, in my context. I am confronted again and again by pressures to sort of cave into the instrumental value of cultural activity. Um, and there's really, no one really even considers the potential 
of uh, the intrinsic value of, of theater in particular.